are now watching part 2 of my discussion vlog for episode 75. If you haven't watched episode 75, please head on to the official YouTube channel of GMA Network or watch the part 1 of my discussion video for today's episode. Let's now start for the interesting points of this episode. Let's go with number 1. Creative derivative of Gilgan. Yes, on this episode, we get to have Arisa and Takeo as the foster children of Watson. We don't have Gilgan as the comrade of General Watson from the anime. Same background as honorable warriors of Buzan, but the twin warriors are most likely loyal to Contessa Zaki, which in contrast on the anime that Gilgan is a warrior of Prince Zardos. I know a lot would like Gilgan, but this is different take for the series as it's already a stretch of what they can do for the extension. We don't have Gilgan as I believe that the creative team don't want to tarnish the warrior turn to beast fighter in the anime. As Direct Mark has said before on his interview with Nerd Rage, they remove the mystical elements of the show. So Gilgan being gigantified by Zardos is omitted as we have identified the beast fighters for Volus 5 Legacy as a big mechanical robot with artificial intelligence. Napaka-clear talaga ng description ng Beast Fighters. Let's go with number 2. All Volta's members are trapped inside the secret camp of Contessa Zaki. Well, that's a hard part on this episode that in order to rescue Little John, the primary Volta's team are tasked to save Little John. Without thinking the consequences of the Camp Big Falcon to be attacked defenselessly by the Buzanians, that is a challenge for next week. Kaya naman nakaka-excite talaga, lalo na nung pinakita sa sneak peek. Now, that's a twist that we really want that is soon to come on the series. It is seen on the sneak peek that Zardas took advantage of the unfortunate demise of the Volta's team with Zaki as Zardas wants to attack the Camp Big Falcon without the pilots of the Volta's robot. Whatever is in store for us, it really is an exciting one for next week. Kaya wag bibitew. Let's go with number 3. Sa pacing naman tayo. Yes, this episode redeemed itself from episode 73 and 74's little bit so-so approach. With this episode, a good pace and lore from the anime was adapted and that is the story of Gilgan, which then turned in live action as Watson being the foster father for Arisa and Takeo. It is soon to unfold how the twins got their loyalty to follow Zaki but we can assume that Zaki has wrongly sent an information to the twins. Maybe it is thought that the Camp Big Falcon has held Watson hostage and not knowing that the Bozanian saucers of Zardos chased the mechanical eagle that Watson is piloting, which led to the death of Watson. So the blame is on the voters team instead of knowing the truth as these twins seems to just follow what they think is right. Let's go with number 4. Jamie's injury. It turns out that on this episode that Jamie should still be recovering in the infirmary as gunshots takes weeks for the body to recover. Minsan pa nga months, ba? Especially on the organs hit by the bullet. As per my knowledge, even after 3 weeks, you would still feel weak and hard to do swift and heavy movements. But of course, this is a sci-fi with an advanced breakthrough to medical field, especially on surgery. Hindi na yun expand ng palabas. Perhaps it is possible that there is an advanced slice and stitch done on Jamie. Again, let's not make it complicated since Voltus 5 is an advanced technology and so is the medical field for the series. Who knows the back? It is evident here that Jamie still feels bad and not completely recovered. It is funny that she wants to fight in her state on her not-so-pride condition. Maybe she have taken pride of taking down a Buzanian at least, so possible na inisip niya na may chance siyang manalo laban kay Arisa. Let's go with number 5, the tag team match of Zaki. Funny as I say, yes, this is like a death match in a simpler approach a gladiator battle of fighting for their life. Perhaps audience like us may think that, oh, why is this happening? As you all know that even though the Bosa technology is advanced, the culture and way of speaking is traditional or a classical one. Perhaps this is a custom of the Bosanians that is carried over on earth for an honorable fight for the Bosanians that take pride, especially as this is the chance of the non-horn skilled warriors 
characterized in rocks. Foolish as it may seem, but it shows another culture of Bosanians that is mostly missed by the viewers at this point which also exists on the anime. It is not discussed as well on the online forums. Well, it is funny that Zaki took a vacation house as her secret hideout from Zardas Eye and made the scene a little anticlimactic with the scene of a small-scale battle. But Contessa Zaki being a girl, she chose a simple mini castle-like ambience as shown on the episode. Let's go with number 6, Steve and Mark's banter. Well, it's already too much to the point that this whole week featured a bad relationship for these two. At least we wanted Mark to have a character development, at least to protect his comrades rather than thinking that the Armstrong are so special and privileged. It is with this prejudice that truly puts his character downwards making him like a villain in the eyes of the watchers or the viewers who looks after on Mark's cool lone wolf characteristics. Did the writers really have taken this far or are they cooking something up for him before the final two weeks of the series, let's wait for this to be answered on the next episodes. Let's go with number 7. Ozlak is mentioned missing. What I like here in this episode is the mention of Ozlak missing as well. Tinahin nila sa new scenes since hindi kasama si Nico Antonio sa taping ng new episodes. Siguro dahil sa current commitments ng actor na hindi makakasama si Ozlak sa extension or sa insert scenes Pero okay lang, kasi for sure babalik yan for the last two weeks since kasama siya sa Space War. Ito yung na-comment ko ata no episode 73 vlog entry about him missing and never been mentioned at all at na-address ng episode na ito. Let's go with number 8, expectation for next week. I really hope that they conclude already the Arisa and Takeo art. Though interesting, but we don't want to drag the drama on them as we are already too much on it. If it's balanced with a beast fighter battle, then I won't think twice to just watch and enjoy. What I really wanted to end urgently that is truly anticlimactic already on the series. We can ignore Ava, but we cannot truly delete or remove her here on Votus 5 Legacy. Kahit pasabihin natin na magkakaroon ng ibang narrative cut for another country like Japan for them to address the dragging plot for Ava. I mean, diba, dapat na-resolve na yan noon-noon pa eh. Kaso nga lang, sobrang tagal. And until now, hindi pa natatapos ang kadramahan ni Ava. Something that leaves a great itch that we are still scratching from episode 4 until now, diba? Episode 75 na. What can I say on this episode? For me, this is the best feeler that they have greatly stitched well in the series. Ang theory and expectation ka talaga na si Arisa Takeo ang magpipiloto ng Beast Fighter inspired by the design of Gilgan. Lalabas na bago yan sa side ng Bozenians, but that could have been possible if planned all along. Wala sa original narrative ang Arisa and Takeo arc, but it was able to deliver a good stitch on the scenario of Volta's pilot missing with the Camping Falcon being attacked by another Beast Fighter. And syempre, nagkaroon din ng character development for Zardos to have a new tactic, ba? Nung nalaman niya na bising busy ang Voltus team kay Zaki, eh, nag-decide siya katakihin ng Captain Falcon. Yun yung nandun sa sneak peek, guys, ha? Sorry to spoil you, pero nandun na yun sa sneak peek. Panoorin nyo. Well, I just don't know how was that pulled off sa script na tinahin nila sa isang Beast Fighter knowing na mahirap yung modeling and rendering ng CGI scenes. So ito na nga, if it's made recently lang ba or they have to edit the old plot out and improve the one with a more intense art. At this point, hindi ko rin alam. Complicated na yon sa production pero it's a brave move of direct mark and the creatives to suddenly change. O to, share ko lang ha. Feeling ko lang ha na yung original plot was for the Volta's team to not be able to fight because of the microbes, then they would insert a new beast fighter. Yung Hydra-like beast fighter na pinakita sa sneak peek. Dahil sa extension, they omitted that one and may have changed to Arisa Takeo art, which replaced the plot of the Volta's members' absence to pilot the Volta's 5 if they really have not made new beast fighter and CGI scenes. Yun lang naman. Again guys, hula lang ito behind the production. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo guys, halos fresh take ang mga recent episodes. At ang dami ng pinahabang mga scenes like pagkamatay ni General Robinson. Kaya mas lalong gumanda ang Jamie Oscar arc, ba? Who knows, ba? 
Grabe yung tayo this time guys for the extension. Halos di mo ma-feel na nadagdag lang dahil sa CGI scenes na pinakita sa abangan. I think for me, ang brilliant ng pasok ng Beast Fighter and the more pang exciting ang missing Volta's pilot arc na talagang for me ha, it is something that I really wanted all along, noon noon pa para sa palabas. Kasi I really want them to explore the reserve pilots as well na sinasabi ni Professor Smith before. As usual, sabihin ko na naman na mahaba ang ating discussion, guys. Again, comment down below kung may gusto ko yung itanong or idagdag sa ating discussion. O yung nga pala, gusto pala itanong para sa episode na to. Nagustuhan nyo ba? Naging excited ba kayo for next week? Diba, napakaganda ng surprise na pinakita nila, lalong-lalo na sa sneak peek, guys. O siya, tapusin na natin, guys. As always, maraming 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 salamat po sa inyong pagtutok until the end of this video. And I really hope to see you on the next one. Hanggang sa muli, paalam!